Hey guys, today I thought I would show you how easy it is to basket weave a cake, just like this wedding cake I did. So let's start. In order to basket weave, you're going to need the following items. You're going to need some wax paper and a cake board and if the size of the cake, or if you don't have that, uh, you can use a cake pan. You're going to need a marker and a toothpick and a bag of icing with tip 47 on the nozzle. So the first thing we got to do is make a guide so we'll know where to put the spokes on a cake. So you'll take your sheet of wax paper and then you'll take your cur uh, cake circle or your pan and you'll set it down and you're going to use a marker to go around the outside edge. And you can do this for any size cake. I'm doing a six inch cake for this video. So once you get the outline done, you're going to cut it out. And then like this one, this one I already cut out, you're going to start folding it. And you want to fold it evenly. This is so we can make a pattern so we know where to put the vertical lines on the basket weaving. Fold it once fold it twice. Now we've got it into fours and then now we'll fold it again and crease it really good. It's kind of hard to crease with these gloves on. And you can keep folding it on however many spokes you want. We're ju I'm just doing a small six inch cake here. So see, I've got all the creases, and then we will come over here, and I will set it down on the top. Now, you want the top of your cake iced smooth in a nice amount of buttercream. The sides of the cake, you want a little more than crumb coating, because we're going to be basket weaving the sides, so you don't want it fully iced because then that would be too much icing plus some of the icing might fall off. Um, but you don't want just crumb coated amount either. You need a little bit more. But the top should be iced like you normally would the cake. So then I'm going to set it down. Now I have a guide to mark where I want the spokes of the basket weave. So everywhere there's a mark up here, I'm going to mark there. And you know, I think that's almost too far apart. I'm tempted to fold it back up. So let me mark it. See what I'm doing? I'm just going around and placing a mark. And there we're back. You can also eyeball it. If you're doing a really small cake, you know, you can just eyeball it, but you're liable to get, uh, you know, some wonky sides. So I don't know. I'm thinking this is a little too far. However, if I do it again in between, that's almost too short. Hmm, what might I do? Uh, I think I'll go ahead and I'll just mark it in between. Sometimes you know you just have to do it on the fly. This will at least get it. You can straighten your lines up when you're actually working on the cake. Okay. So now I have an idea where I want all my spokes to go. So let's start basket weaving. Okay, now you want to be sitting down when you basket weave, or you want the cake high enough to where it's close to being eye level. That way you don't get wonky leaning spokes. Now, some people like to mark the entire spoke. 
you know, so they can keep their lines straight. Some people do it that way. I don't know. I tend to just eyeball it. Um, but some of you, you know, may not feel comfortable eyeballing it. You're not going to be as accurate eyeballing it, but you can go all the way around and that's where you know you're going to want your vertical uh, lines. So you have a choice. When using tip 47, one side, let me see, one side has these grooves. The other side is smooth. And what that looks like when you're piping Okay, if you have the smooth side facing up, when you squeeze, you're going to get this nice smooth looking design. If you rotate the tip with the groove side up and you squeeze, then you're going to get this grooved pattern. And honestly, it's just personal preference. Either one looks nice, you could do a smooth uh, basket weaver you could do the uh, groove side I tend to like the grooved one whichever design you decide just remember to pay attention as you're doing it because it's easy to accidentally turn the you know when you're squeezing the icing rotate the bag and next thing you know half of your cake is done smooth and the other half is grooved <laughs> ask me how I know uh, one thing to pay attention to whenever you're decorating is the amount of icing that you put in the bag. You don't want to put too much in because let me tell you, that is really hard on your hands. So keep a, you know, maybe just half full. I know that's annoying to have to keep putting icing in your bag, but take it from me. When you're squeezing clear at the back of the bag, it takes a lot of pressure to get it to come out the nozzle end. And I've been doing this for 23 years, and I had to have carpal tunnel surgery on both my hands due to cake decorating. So it's not fun. So just keep your bag halfway full. You'll have a lot better control on it, and it'll just, in the long run, be a lot easier on your hands. So just a little warning there. Okay, so let's start basket weaving. I'm going to do the grooved and some people like to go from the top down some from the bottom up doesn't matter i'm to film i think i'm going to try doing it this way so my bag's not in view of the camera but we're going to squeeze lightly well that's not even sticking okay touch the cake lightly lightly touch the cake and then you're going to squeeze try to be steady i shouldn't have drank all those diet cokes this morning okay so we have our first line you cannot go around and do all your lines so don't even attempt it this is a design that has to be done as you go at the bottom tuck it right behind you're going to squeeze and go over to where the next line will be. Then you're going to space it the width of your tip. So you'll come in, leave a space, come up here, squeeze, and go over to the next line. Leave a space, come up, squeeze, go over to the next line. Try to keep your lines level. That's the hardest part when you're doing this especially if you're a mile away from the cake, like I am because I'm filming, but squeeze, go over, space, and go over. There'll be borders at the bottom and at the top. So now that you have it done like this, the next step then is to put a, a line, a spoke all the way down, covering up the ends of what you just did. Now, for the next one, you tuck it in. You go in here, you're gonna squeeze, 
and go all the way over to here. Come back in, squeeze. That's why you can't do the spokes ahead of time. You gotta, because you're gonna be going over them. And you fill in that space that you had left last time. Try to keep them as level as possible. And there you have it that way. Then you put another spoke. It's easy once you get the hang of it. And then we'll do it one more time. We're gonna go in, squeeze, go over, tuck it in, squeeze, go over. Okay, that's how you basket weave. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do all the way around and then I'll be back to show you how to finish off. See you in a bit. Okay, here I am at the end. And the end can be kind of tricky because most of the time your lines are not gonna line up because, you know, just, human error as you go around sometimes they'll be a little lower sometimes they'll be higher and so generally you just have to make it look the best you can to be honest you're going to go you know i'm going to go over here and try to get it to line up with the other ones and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and honestly very few people would ever notice it and most of the time you'll be decorating like if you're going to do a basket full of flowers or whatever that's how i would have the flowers come down wherever it ended but as you can see here i'm just going through you don't want to leave any gaps so you have to fill everything in and sometimes you have to go back over the because of the nozzle it doesn't want to tuck in when it hits the other icing but I can be real nitpicky. I mean, like I said, once you put the bottom border and the top border on, it looks uh, really nice and nobody notices that it's not perfect right there usually. But, you know, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm gonna keep doing it. But let's do the border. Rope borders look really nice with basket weave, so that's what I'm going to put on it. I'm using a tip 21, which is a star tip, and I'm going to start with a bottom border. Now, the rope border is essentially the letter S laid on its side. So if you think of a capital S, you know, laid over, it'll look better if I do it. So here's the S. See how that looks like an S? laying on its side and then you stick the nozzle up under and then you make another S. It's just a series of S's around the cake. So you'll stick the nozzle back in, go up, make another S, stick it back in and you just keep doing that. It's a really easy border and it's pretty when it's done. It looks like kind of like braided rope. So I am going to do that around the bottom and the top of the cake and then I will be right back. So here the cake is finished with fresh strawberries. I also did it with flowers which you'll see here in a second. Well I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you did please give it a thumbs up and um, consider subscribing so YouTube will share it with more people. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.